welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Around here, we'll be talking about all things expansion, going from good to great and from great to greatness. I'm your host, Barbie Collab. Get ready for your next level. Let's do this. You're listening to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Today, we are going to talk about the guilt or the inner struggle that many people feel around creating wealth, wanting more income. There's just this hang up that many people have where they believe that they are too materialistic. And that, of course, has to do with much of the conditioning. So before we jump in, I am so flippin' excited to announce that I will be offering a free workshop on September 14th on reclaiming your relationship or your right to money and healing your relationship to money. So you can go ahead and register for this free workshop. The link is in the show notes. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited and I'm going to give you tangible information that you can walk away and apply in your life. And it's also a sneak preview of my upcoming course, Become a High Money Magnet. Okay, it's also in the show notes that you can get on the waiting list. You will find out when the cart opens and you will receive $100 off if you decide to register for my course. All right, so let's jump in. The guilt, the struggle, the feelings of like, oh, I want more. I want to earn more. I want to activate more. I want to call in more income into my life. That struggle for many people is real. The other day I made a post where I said that money is a reflector because I was really thinking about how people always say in the law of attraction world, money is energy, money is energy, money is energy. And I don't know, that just didn't resonate with me. So it resonates and it doesn't resonate. But I was going to say, I can't teach something if I don't embody it, if I don't fully understand it or what is meant by that. And one of the promises that I made to myself when I started this podcast, when I started teaching about the law of attraction and manifestation was that I'm not just here to repeat what other people have said. One of my gifts, really, I am going to be bold enough to say that, is that I I simplify things for other people, first for myself and for other people. And so we don't serve anyone when we simply repeat things because, well, that's where we get in trouble, actually, right? When we repeat things simply because someone else said that. So I kept seeing and hearing in videos and just in my readings that money is energy, money is energy, money is energy. I'm like, what does that mean? So I was on a walk with my dogs one day and I was like, you know what? Money is really a reflector. Money reflects what the beholder feels. Let's take a step back. If I think that money can be used for a source of good, and I'm playful with money, and I just have a good relationship with money. I feel secure, I feel excited to earn it, I feel excited to circulate it, then that's what I'm going to think about money. And the character of money itself is going to reflect my own feelings, my own attitudes, my own beliefs. But if someone has a relationship to money where they think that money is evil or that money causes problems or that money is dirty, then that's what's going to be reflected back to the person. So it's not really that money has any inherent quality. 
it really is a reflection and i haven't heard anyone say that so i was so excited to share that insight to share that aha moment and i did i posted about it and then i saw that someone and it doesn't matter who it is and i actually asked her because she said we are not to worship money and i i looked at that comment i sat with it for a long time and i thought the context is perfect actually but i'm saying that i wasn't asking what are some of the things that you have heard people say about money so to me it felt like i was being kind of told cautionary it felt very cautionary i felt that i was being reminded just like a parent would remind a child or just like a, a teacher or you know society or i don't know maybe even church it it felt very cautionary that here i was trying to just share that money is a reflection of the way that we feel and that we have control over the way that we feel and that what i was trying to share was very empowering we have the ability to shift our relationship to money because it's it's kind of like you know when when you you see a needy person that wants to be your friend you're not attracted to that neediness you are attracted i hope i mean it just actually i'll take that back it really depends right some people are attracted to neediness i personally am not i'm attracted to just people and things that have a high vibration but that means that there's an energetic match but my point is that if you are fearful of money and money frightens you and it scares you and that those are the feelings that you're going to hold around money guess what you're going to have a really really hard time attracting money holding on to money keeping money and if you do your relationship it's not playful so that's how my comment about money being a reflector was meant to be empowering So this person that said we are not to worship money, what was the intention behind that comment? And I asked about it and she didn't respond and that's that's okay. Again, I'm not here to shame or blame anyone. I just recognized that I myself was triggered and not in tri- in the way that the term triggered is used that you know it it triggered some psychological response for me and that I felt some kind of PTSD no not at all but it did bring up some emotions and so i asked myself why did it stir something up inside me and i realized that the reason that it stirred something up inside me is not because i thought i was being accused of worshiping money because i know who i am and how i'm being in the world and that I'm not I'm not worshiping money and I'm we're going to get into this like my relationship with money and I want you to explore the place of money in your life but the reason that my feelings got stirred is because just like parents teachers the people in your life in our society when we were growing up how they would tell us things about money and they would model certain behaviors about money that's how we got programmed that's how our subconscious got programmed and we are walking around in this world 95% of our behavior is based on the programming that happened as children and so many of us are walking around in this world the product of statements like this we are not to worship money so if you are susceptible as we all were as children to programming and we're told we are not to worship money we are not to worship money we are not to worship money how do you think that you are going to relate to building wealth activating and allowing money to flow in you're also going to be cautionary you're also going to be the word that comes to mind is trepidatious you're going to be wary because who wants to be told that they're worshiping money and so i didn't get upset at this person i recognize that when i get who i don't know by the way but i recognize that when i get triggered 
And this is an invitation to you. When you get triggered, it's an invitation to become curious, not to start fighting with people on the internet, I have no interest in doing that, but it's really an invitation to just get curious. It's like, okay, what, what's going on there? And so I realized that what bothered me was that this is, this is the kind of stuff that our parents would say, and that has stopped many of my clients, many of the people that I work with. This is what I saw in my course, the Become a High Money Magnet course, is that subconsciously, it was mostly women, there was one man, it was mostly women who were afraid to, and they didn't even know it. They didn't even know that that was a block. There was something that was stopping them. And that something was oftentimes, not always, the father figures, for example, saying women are not supposed to do this and money is evil. And the list goes on of the kinds of things that parents would say to children that later stop them in their life from being able to pursue their dreams and to be successful. And even though there were many people who were successful in their careers in my course, I saw that they had reached a ceiling many times because of the programming that happened. And so I really want to invite you, and this is what we're going to be doing in my workshop and of course in my Money Magnet course, is I really want you to start becoming aware, aware of the things that people said and the behavior that was modeled around you. I wanted to shift gears a little bit and share some of my story of how I've changed and my relationship to money has changed and my relationship to spirituality have changed. And maybe in me sharing some of my story, you will be able to relate, but also this is an invitation for you to reflect on your own story. Because again, I see that many people are afraid of wanting more out of fear that it's going to say something about who they are as a person, that they're just materialistic. And that's certainly an option. There are all kinds of people in the world. I mean, that's really something that we talk about a lot in this podcast, that the world is full of possibilities. And if you are interested in being someone that is just after material things and nothing more, that's certainly an option for you. But I, I don't really think that that's my following and the people that listen to my podcast. And so by sharing my story, I think that you might be able to get some insight. So growing up, I was afraid of money. I rejected money. I really thought that by pursuing my PhD and having a good career, that I would just be able to have a good life and I was determined to have a good life no matter what, but I was always afraid of looking at my bank account. I was always in the red, I was in debt. I mean, it was not a good relationship with money, but I think that's a relationship that many people have with their finances. And so when I started my network marketing business, I was deep in debt. And in a few years, I started making really amazing money. And I remember about six years in, I was at the height of my success with my network marketing company. I had just met my husband, and so I was super in love. Everything was fresh love and everything. So I had the finances, I had the love, and yet there was something that felt like it was missing. And I was so afraid. I was so afraid of sharing that because I was like, wait, I'm making tons of money. I've met the person of my dreams. Why do I feel this emptiness and this void? Really, it was burnout, but it felt sort of spiritual as well. And that's when I learned the hard lesson that money doesn't buy you inner peace. And you would think that falling in love, like solves all your problems for all of you who are single or in a relationship that 
other people are not there to fill our voids. Like happiness is an inside job. And so you can, and I had this conversation with one of my students who has children and she's like, you know, sometimes I feel this loneliness, even though I have a family and I, and I love my children, I love my husband because it has to do with yourself, your relationship to yourself. It always goes back to that. And for those of you who are you know, believers in God, of course, you have your relationship to God, but you still need to cultivate your relationship to yourself. And so it was really during this period where I felt like I had it all that my relationship to money changed. And I saw that money doesn't buy you inner happiness, inner peace, inner calm. And so that was a wonderful gift because that's really when I decided to go within. And that's when really, really my journey of going within and getting to know myself and really understanding that we are connected to this universe. And I am into like Buddhist philosophy and Zen philosophy and this like we are part of this cosmic universe. I truly, truly believe that. And so I'm grateful for that because now here I am, I still make a great income. I still have a great relationship. And yes, there are times that things don't feel peaceful. Things don't feel calm. I might get stressed. I might get frazzled. But in general, I have a sense of joy, a constant state of joy, a constant, and by constant, I don't mean every single second of the day, but a general sense of calm, a general sense of peace, a general sense of like, just, just everything's good. Everything's working out. And if you look at things politically and just having had health issues, things don't have to be perfect for me to have this. And so if I lay things out on the table for us, financially, I'm well, my relationship is great. And what am I doing then? What am I doing this for? For me, my purpose has to do with for me to feel truly alive, I want to and have to be, not have to be because it's, it's something that I get to do, but I want to be creative. I desire to create this, the podcast, my courses. I feel like I've been given these a gift of teaching and what I'm teaching right now has to do with creating abundance. And so... For me, it's always been about helping others. So there's a financial piece. Yes, I am here on this physical plane, just like you in this 3D universe. And I am very okay with financial abundance. I am fully invested in growing myself as a human and in helping and guiding and mentoring other people to create whatever it is that they want to create in their lives, whether it's financial freedom or to cultivate a wonderful relationship with themselves or to create a business situation. And I don't think I'm preaching, but what I'm trying to promote is for you and people around me that are in my world to have abundance. And that abundance is not just materialism. That is not who I am. To me, pure materialism, to me, that's empty. And so hopefully in me sharing a little bit about my story and my trajectory, you see that, yes, there is a financial piece. Yes, I enjoy allowing money to come in. I don't believe like I used to believe that I have to work my like, you know, 16 hour days, 12 hour days to make it happen and that it all has to be a struggle. Of course, there's effort. I believe in helping other people. I believe that I am put on this earth to be creative, to guide others, to help them rewrite their story and to cultivate 
the relationship to myself and to the world around me. To me, that is noble. To me, that is awesome. But you get to define what it is that you want for yourself. All right, I hope that I have given you some food for thought. And again, remember to register for my free workshop. The link is in the show notes. And I haven't asked you for a while, but I would love to ask you to leave an honest review of my podcast. That really helps with the algorithm. And what I want is for people to find me, right? To expand my circle, to expand the number of people that I can help. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Did you love that episode or what? Make sure to leave me a review and let's connect over on Facebook in your empowered life community. I'll see you next time.